In this morning's Health Watch, those winter woes, freezing temperatures, ice, snow, they all have a definite impact on our health. And Dr. Jennifer Ashton is here to tell us why our bodies react the way they do. Great to see Good you, Good morning, Jen. Rebecca. So the first thing I'm thinking of is the shivering, the uh, teeth chattering when right. you're outside. Why is this going on? Or sometimes inside in some yeah. cases. You have to distinguish between two things, Rebecca. One is shivering because of cold temperatures, and it can even happen in warm temperatures, but just general mm. shivering, teeth chattering, versus sh what we call in medicine shaking chills, which has a completely different meaning. But when you talk about just general shivering, it's really your body's attempt through its internal mechanisms to generate heat through muscle contraction. That's what it does. The more movement on a tiny little level, the greater your temperature will get and you will hopefully get warmer when you're talking about shaking chills normally as a doctor when we hear someone say I have shaking chills we think there must be little viral or bacterial particles circulating in their blood mm -hmm. that's the big concern completely different mechanism speaking of big concerns when I was growing up, my mom always had the concern, did I have my hat with me right. when I was leaving the house and, in winter? Yeah. And don't leave with a wet head. My, yes. mom, my mom and your mom must have gone to the same <laughs> mothering school. And that was a very common concept. Not entirely wrong because the bottom line is when it is cold outside, you want to cover all of the body parts that are exposed to that temperature and your head is a big one. Now we used to hear a number circulating around that 40% or more of your body's core temperature heat loss can be lost through your head. The thinking now is that's probably not true. It's probably more like 10%. But the concern, obviously, when you're talking about exposure to extreme cold is hypothermia, which is more common certainly in cold weather, but believe it or not, can even happen in Florida, very common amongst elderly people. And if you think you are at risk for hypothermia, some important things you need to know. Obviously, you want to get into shelter. You want to remove any wet articles of clothing that you might have on your body. And as you rewarm yourself, you want to rewarm from your core or the internal parts of your body first. So talking about the head, neck, armpits, chest, and groin, and warm up slowly. How do you determine whether you're dealing with hypothermia or you're just feeling particularly cold? Well, first of all is length of time. If you've been outside for a, a period of time and you're starting to notice that your, your fingers or your toes are losing their color, or believe it or not, if you stop shivering, that can be a sign that hypothermia is a risk. Mm, that's important to know. When your nose starts to run. This is such a weird thing, because I actually just right. came in from outside and mine feels a little bit that way, but why? Very very common and very annoying for a lot of people. It's basically the nose doing its job. The major function of the nose, believe mm. it or not, is to warm the air coming in and to moisturize it. So as that happens, little tiny blood vessels in the nasal passages dilate. They get a little larger. More fluid is produced, and that produces the drip, drip, drip. That's so common, but it it's is. really just the nose being efficient. Okay, well, that's good to know because I find it kind of annoying, right. but I'm glad to hear it's efficient. In terms of breathing out in the cold, sometimes it, it can actually be harder to breathe breathe when you're in a really cold temperature. Why is that? Absolutely. And again, if we move our way down from the face to the head and neck, again, very similar concept here, Rebecca. Cold air coming into our respiratory airways, especially our upper airways, especially people who are exercising who might be breathing through their mouth, that air is not having an opportunity to be warmed and moisturized, and it can constrict or cause a spasm in the upper airways, particularly problematic for people with asthma. Very easy thing to do. Cover your nose and mouth with a scarf or a piece of fabric, even if you're doing exercise outside. But the bottom line with all these things, they can be annoying, but we want people to enjoy the cold. That's good. I appreciate that. Thank you, Dr. Jennifer you bet, Ashton. Rebecca.